Hey guys, welcome to AHS. We have Adriana uh, Agredano. Agredano here from JCP NHD, and she's going to be covering this with depth in depth with us. So I'm going to let her start. There you go, Adriana. Thank you for coming, Adriana. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My name is Adriana Agredano. I am with JCP LGS Disclosures. I'm also your first American Home Warranty Rep. Um, so something that a lot of people don't know is that JCP and First American are one. So yes, they are together. Um, JCP sold the company to First American. So we not only do warranties, we also have the disclosure side. Okay, so that's why a lot of the times you'll see the logo First American with JCP because it is one corporation. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about, we're going to break down the um, NHD disclosure. Okay. And one of the things that um, we used to do when we would order a report is you would get an email copy and then you would get a hard copy, okay? Mm -hmm. Since COVID and everyone's been staying home, hard copies have to be handled. So unless you request a hard copy, we will not send you a hard copy. Everything is email now. Oh. Adrian, okay, yes? Can I say something? Yes. Can, we, can they hear us over there? Because remember the microphone's over there. Hey, Alan, Angel, can you guys hear us? Can you guys can hear? Me if... Yes. yes. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Okay. Is it clear or does she need to come closer to you guys? No, she, it's clear. Okay, go. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, so when you order a report, the, I stapled these just to show you. This is a three-page part. This is basically the, um, the summary statement, okay? And what this is, it, it's a breakdown of the most important parts that you really need to know about your NHD. Okay, it's going to talk about your flood zones. It's going to talk about um, if the area has potential flooding, uh, fire hazards, uh, any wildlife in the area, earthquake fault zones, and seismic hazard zones. Okay, and it's very specific. It'll say yes or no. Now, that's the areas you want to look at. Okay, that's the first part. Oh, and it's also your signature page. Okay, mm -hmm. so you will always need two signatures from the seller. You'll always need two signatures from the seller's agent, and you'll need two signatures from the buyers. Okay, so this is going to be your signature page. We do provide another signature page in the actual um, report, but um, just in case you need it right away, it's right here, first page. So okay? can I elaborate on that a little? Yes. So, Adam, um, I'm going to go back to the signature page. So on the signature page right there, you see it has two. It only says seller's agent, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, guys. So on the where it says seller's agent, that's for the seller. But you guys can still sign this, okay? okay. Authorize that you you receive the copy as well and see that you can sign on the. Scroll down a little bit more, or scroll up. Up, up. Down. Or down. Yeah. <laughs> you can sign on the bottom down there too, or below near your your near your your buyer, okay? Just saying that you received a copy as well, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can do a digital signature there. Now, the, on the signature page, this is the, what I, what, on back page, and when it says signature page, this is what she's talking about, signature page. When it says report, okay, this is it, the, the other part. So, just want to yeah. go. Hey, John, I have a quick question. You yes. said uh, uh, th there requires two signatures from the seller. Where is the second seller's signature? On the other side. Right there. So, but if there's one seller. Seller. No. Well, then if it's only one seller, then it's only okay, one got seller. It. Okay, got it, got it. Yes. Got it. Okay, and one thing I wanted to point out, this actually is called a combined uh, NHD receipt. Yes. So, no, 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 this is the statement. This is actually the statement. This is the statement, so it makes things really easy because people kind of confuse that, including us. Yeah. So, there, remember, there's the state, um, this is the statement part of an NHD, mm -hmm. and then you have the report. Correct. Yeah, and we'll break down the report in a, in a bit. So I'm still working on the actual statement. Okay. This is what's going to give you the bulk of the information that you're looking for. Okay? So the second page of this statement is your disclosure summary. Okay? And this is where you're going to find if the property, um, again, has um, problems uh, in flooding areas. Okay, or earthquake zones, liquefaction zones, um, and it's also going to be the area where you uh, find out whether or not your house or this property has a uh, pace or hero link. Are you familiar with that? A 
Pacer Hero Lean? Okay, so a Pacer Hero Lean is a government loan that the homeowner has applied for and granted so that they could do home improvements such as um, solar panels or um, what do you energy efficient windows or things of that nature. Okay. Now the reason that we disclose that is that usually, typically, when it's a government loan, there's a lien on the house. So the actual homeowner does not have to pay a monthly bill. They're paying it through their taxes. Okay. So when the house goes up for sale, that lien needs to be paid off before the, the house can actually be sold. Oh, okay. okay, so it's super important that the, the buyer mm -hmm. is aware of that. The, I can't tell you how many times people have backed out because last minute they find out that there's a, a lien, a, a Pace Hero lien on the home, and they're like, nope, we don't want to assume that. Pay where, it off. And where it will be on that? Where, where will, in this report? It'll say it on... Um, which part? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, property tax. Here it is. On the third page where it says property tax determinations. Mm -hmm. It's going to talk about Mellow Roos. It's going to talk about the t uh, 1915 Bond Act, um, your PACE contract, okay? Mm -hmm. And then other district um, or direct assessments. Mm -hmm. That's where it'll tell you. So in this case, this property that we're looking at, which is here in Concord, um, does have Mellow Roos but okay. does not have a PACE contract, okay? So this house okay. would not apply. So the PACE contract is the one that you said the loan, the government loan? Yes, yes, uh-huh. And then if you order from me, okay, mm -hmm. I will tell you, by the way, the report you ordered has a PACE lien on it. So I will email you in case you missed it. Okay. Same thing if it's in a flood zone. Mm -hmm. I will email you and let you know, look out for that flood certificate, you should have received it, but this house is in a flood zone. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. All right. So that's what you're going to look for in this. Now we're going to break down the meat and potatoes of the actual disclosure. Who pays for that? Who pays for what? The liens. The liens? The pays. That needs to come from the seller. Okay. It before it closes. You guys mm -hmm. got that? Okay. This goes to the seller. The buyer so. doesn't pay for it. No. I've only heard of one case where the, the buyer was accepting the, the paper they they were like yeah well we want the house that bad they were willing to assume so the, the, the lien. Wow. yeah yeah and that's the, uh, yeah and that's the only time that i've heard of it otherwise i yeah the buyers are like nope don't yeah. want it mm -hmm. it's just an extra expense they don't want to do it they, they it comes out of their taxes so yeah. so mm -hmm. now if they don't want it do they have to remove the solar system that's a good question i don't know that what the solar system yeah wow. No, but it needs to be paid. So, I well, so if it's paid, okay, and they don't want it, and then... They have to call a, a solar company. I had a, I had a situation no. a couple of years ago that my... Uh, okay, so I was selling the property, mm -hmm. and I was helping buying a property. Mm -hmm. So selling and buying. And the buying, it was... This one, it was selling in Richmond, and the buying in Pinot. And they had a flat roof. But the selling, they have the solar panels. So the buyer didn't want to take care of that, so they had to take get it, uh, take it out and put it on their house. But because the house was in a flat um, roof, they had to wait. But they, but they took it out. The sellers took it out. Interesting. Yeah, they took it out. Okay. It's just a, a, a negotiation thing. Yeah. But they took it out. Sometimes they do. They don't right. want to do it because they will messed up the roof or things like yes. that. But it happened to me yeah. that they, uh, we had to wait and they had to took it out. Yeah, yeah and, and usually solar panels, you know, it, it's, it's an ordeal to get them set up. There's a way that they have to put brackets and they, there's a way mm -hmm. to do it on the roof depending on the type of roof it is also. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter if someone does construction if you don't know how to remove those panels, it has to be the company. It has to be the actual company. No, they will say they mm -hmm. charge you and this, this, and that. Right, yeah. and then solar panels also, they have a warranty. Mm -hmm. The manufacturer gives them anywhere between a 10 to a 25 year warranty. And if, let's say, your husband, for example, decided that he needed to fix something and he busted it, that voids the warranty. Yeah, uh, because you have to actually have the solar company yeah, come out and do it. Everything is nice to be clear. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Moving on. All right, you guys. So here now we're gonna look at this this big guy. 
This is the actual NHD disclosure. So the first map is your natural hazard zones, okay? And so you have your little legend down at the bottom, which gives you um, the actual areas of what they, everything is, where the, the flood zones are, potential flooding, dam failure, high fire zones, uh, wild uh, life areas, earthquake zones, seismic hazard zones, and liquefaction zones. You guys are familiar with those terms, right? The, the liquefaction? No, can you explain what that liquefaction is? Liquefaction is basically um, landslides. It's, it's a, um, where there's a lot of flooding and the earth starts to move. That's what liquefaction is, okay? So uh, people that purchase homes in like the Oakland Hills, Berkeley, um, Berkeley um, even the San Leandro area. You know, I used to live in San Leandro, and we lived up in a hill. And that was something that we it was disclosed to us that, based on the area, um, we were in an area where liquefaction could happen. So, what is what is the actual what is liquefaction? I, uh, earth moving, moving landslides. Okay, landslide. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's just a fancy word for landslide. <laughs> 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 At the bottom, where the little legend is. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And so the second page, I have my notes here. I'm going to follow my notes. Okay. So um, the second page is a more of an environmental hazard site. Okay. And this is where it's going to talk about, um, uh, like, Storage tanks, underground storage tanks, oil or gas wells, um, hazardous liquid pipes, um, landfill facilities, leaks, cleanups. This is um, more like uh, areas, I would say. Brentwood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys. I never knew that there were oil wells under oil tanks. Yeah, you're the one in, who brought it up. Brentwood, okay. Um, they are. You have yeah. to be aware of that. A lot of when they built these homes over in Brentwood yes. and over off of the, by the Shadow Lakes, the that Marsh area, Creek area, the Marsh Creek area, they used to have oil tankers there. Yeah. And I always thought that there were nice looking street lights. You're right, those black little, those are vents. Oh wow. Those yeah. are vents for the vapors that from these tanks to escape into yes. the air. Yeah. So now there's a big thing that's going on because somebody wants to drill oil back in Brentwood again and put all these little, what they call them? Um, uh, oil pumping donkeys. donkeys. Oh yeah, yeah, the oil pumps. Yeah, mm -hmm. in Brentwood. Mm -hmm. so. so the first two pages are your maps, okay? And then your third page, again, signature page. So let's say, for example, your receipt that you got, you lose the signature page, it's okay because you have a signature page in the actual report. Don't we just like to make inside. sure. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to make sure that you are covered, okay? So from here, we're just going to jump into the table of contents, which is page number four. And then you can just, from there, you know, go to whatever page. now. Here's the thing. Remember I said that you guys are going to get it emailed? You see how the um, on your paper, the actual table of contents, the wording is all black, but the numbers are all um, blue? Uh -huh. So if, if you're doing it via email, if you were to just go to click on that little number, mm -hmm. it's going to take you to that page. Ah, it's like okay. a hyperlink. It's a hyperlink. Ah, yeah, yeah. So that's what's really cool about this. Okay? okay? And the same thing if you go into page number five your actual disclosure summary. Okay, you see how over at the far right, all the, le the numbers are highlighted a different color? It's the same thing. So anything that's highlighted in a different color is automatically a, a hyperlink. So just think of that, okay? All right, so again, this is just a summary of what you got in the first three pages, okay? It's gonna tell you what's going on with the property as far as determinations, county city levels, um, statutory disclosures, it's all in your first few pages, okay? Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to jump into page 7, which is where it starts talking about your state-defined natural hazard zones. 
and this is where it's going to tell you talk about if if you're um, if you find that you want more details about what's going on in your property because it came up with one of these hazards. Mm -hmm. This is where you're going to find it. Okay. Can I show you real quick. <clears throat> See this link right here. This is if you click on that link, it'll tell you on the FEMA. Okay, if that property was reclassified that they've actually changed their zoning for flooding, mm -hmm. okay? Because mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be on here, because it, it could say it's in a flood zone, but if it's at a higher elevation right. that's been reevaluated, then they don't have to pay the full uh, pricing for a flood, uh, flood insurance, right. okay? So they could have a lower flood insurance if their elevation is above what the actual flooding is, okay? So that link actually is a big help. It is. It is a big help. And in California, okay. um, we're constantly having to work with that because California is a unique state. Things are always changing environmentally. So um, we actually just redid our maps for all of that just recently. So, And then, you know, I'm going to touch on that, that that Kenny just talked about. So the way that we disclose on a flood zone um, is very unique. So I'm going to take my phone here and I'm going to say that this table, just this table, not this half, but this half, is an actual parcel. So we disclose on the parcel, not the actual property. So let's say this, my phone, is the house, okay? But it's in this parcel here, okay? We could have a flood zone over here, but because the house is here, the house is in a flood zone, but the house is not in any danger of being flooded. Okay, so when you get your report and it says yes in a flood zone, but then we'll give you more details mm -hmm. in a flood zone, but the house is okay, but you still want to make sure that you give this report to the buyer because that's going to save the buyer a lot of money from flood insurance. Okay, so it's super important that you, you know that. So some areas of um, like say in Contra Costa that would have uh, would be in a flood zone. Well, does anybody know some different areas? Richmond is all over in the flood zone. Richmond, Martinez, okay. Anywhere there's a Discovery Bay, a creek, okay. Anywhere there's a creek that flows around somebody's house, is a potential flood zone area mm -hmm. because the creeks rise. Um, Lafayette, the dam, that's within the dam, mm -hmm. the hundred year dam. If the if the dam ever breaks, that's within, you know, El Sobrante and all those areas. Right. Those are all within that flood zone area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is it going to happen? Who knows? Who knows? You know? It could. I mean, I, there's even in, even in Antioch, mm -hmm. on Lone Tree, there's a little creek, and there, it's dry. It's yeah. a dry bed, but they have to state it because, um, Alan, you remember this one? This is right behind the house that we had to actually get it removed from the saying that they didn't need flood insurance because it was a, in the 100 year. Flood zone. Flood area. zone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and sometimes that that does happen, especially where there's dams around, um, mm -hmm. like with the El Nino mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these dams they break. Mm -hmm. And um, even in Manteca, um, yeah. I have family in, in Manteca. The, the levees busted, and in an area where people didn't think they would ever be flooded, they ended up with ankle high water in their home. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. it can happen. You're built on sand. Oh yeah. You know, huh. properties. You know, it's not going to be stable. Yep. Okay, so we're going to jump right into page ten. So uh, now we're talking about county and city natural hazard zones. Okay. And so that's another thing that we do. We disclose on county and city levels. And um, we want to make sure that uh, you are very well aware of what's going on in the area. Because, let's say, for example, um, the new home buyer sees this property and it's a big lot and there's tons of land in their backyard and they want to build. The city may say, you can't. Okay, so that's why we disclose on city and county levels because there may be an, a reason why the city won't allow them to build in their own backyard. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's where you're going to find the, the general plan for that sort of thing. Contra Costa County Geo, Geo, I can't even pronounce that word. 
ge geological. geologic zone discussions. Um, so that's where you're going to, let's see, and now we're going to go to page 13. This one's a good one too. This is a, the uh, additional proper specific disclosure. So um, like maybe a, a former military ordinance site, site disclosure. Um, there's an area I want to say, I think Leo. there's, Pittsburgh. yes, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Um, Naval Weapon Station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yes, and so that's what this discloses. Right. Okay, and commercial and industrial zoning, that's another thing as well that uh, we disclose on. Um, which, that reminds me, by the way, we don't just sell reports for residents. If you are doing commercial, I can provide you with a commercial report. Commercial. Yeah, and I believe oh, really? that, okay. yes, yes, I can provide you with commercial reports. And the, the reports come a little bit different. There's, I believe there's 17 things that we disclose with residential and I believe there's only 12 with commercial. So it's, it is a different, a lot of people will buy a residential um, NHD for commercial, but there are differences, so don't be fooled. How many on the residential? I believe there's 17 things that we dis we disclose, yeah. And commercial? And then commercial, there's like 12. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and then we're gonna jump into page 20. This is your general advisories, okay? And this is basically general stuff like Megan's Law, registered sex offenders. We make sure that you are aware of what's happening in that area, okay? Um, the second page from that, page 21, your hazardous liquid transmission pipelines, um, which is what Kenny was talking about earlier, anything underneath. Uh, PG&E has... I hate it with this one. <laughs> this one actually, because because of the PG and E accident that happened in San Mateo, mm -hmm. um, they, these reports were updated. Yes. Okay. They didn't have these really. No. They didn't have this before. Remember, anytime there is a something that happens in a county that's environmental, like the fires now. Yes. Okay. So now fires now, they're gonna say, well, with, because of potential fire zone, right? Are they going to say you're going to need more fire insurance to uh, to protect your property? You know, and a lot of these things happen. You know, when they happen, laws are coming up. The more it's more disclosures that come up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, say you live in say the hills of Berkeley, okay, in the hills, and your you, you, your your client wants to sell the property. Would you disclose? You would have. Would you have to disclose that there was a fire in that area in 1989? Right. Yeah. Okay. Those are, if you know the fact, I mean, if you know, you know, if you guys were born by then or so. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were babies. <laughs> you know, but I'm going to say that this, remember, anything of, that, of, that affects the property that you know of, it, you, have to you have to disclose it and inform it, okay? And just let them know. Remember, over-disclosing is better than not disclosing, okay? The more they, the buyer, but everybody knows everything that's up front, you're transparent, they can't come back and say, you never told me, you know? And then that's why we have these things signed off on, is to protect yourself, okay? So I'm sure that. Yep. Um, that was page 21, right? That was page 21. Yeah, and then page 22, which is kind of an interesting one. So I didn't know about this <laughs> until I actually started working for JCP. But uh, methamphetamine-contaminated properties, we disclose on that as well. Uh, so how do you know it's a meth lab? How would you disclose that there was a meth lab? I guess it would have had to have been seized. Seized? Wow. Is there any certain smells? I'm sure there's smells. I'm sure there's, oh, yeah. Chemicals, uh, chemicals. Ammonia, fertilizer. But, yeah, and, and all of that needs to be disclosed because that stuff ends up in the ground. Oh, that's true. Yes, so you have to disclose that. So if, if what, a what family purchases a house and let's say they want to do some gardening and it's just not happening, that's why. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Yeah. What about if it was a grow house? If it was a grow house, yeah, all of that has to be disclosed. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, in to the to the point where you want to disclose if somebody died in the house too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. Here, here's one thing to to see to you guys when you you're you can kind of tell if something was had something wrong with the property. 
when you see a lot of electrical ducting or yes. ducts in the attic for ventilation, mm -hmm. <laughs> extra, extra panels.